I don't think Kevin Samuels had any positive impact. <gasps> mm-hmm. I feel like there was truth in the messaging, but the delivery was flawed. You don't need to break women down in order to be able to big up your brothers. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Love them. How can I compete when I'm the prize? I'm not dealing with that. You can believe whatever that you feel you are. You can be the rainbow. You can be Skittles. What? You can be Snickers. You can be f-ing Barney Rubble. But you have to be able to prove what you're talking about. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Johnny Tamaya and this is the Repat Podcast. Uh, Agaba Tumusimi is my name. People call me Gabs, aka Master Gabs on all of your social platforms. Follow me, check me out. Okay, perfect. My name's Martina. Everyone calls me Tina and it's Tina Graham on everything. T-E-E-N-A-H Graham. Okay. I'm so lucky to be sitting next to her. Uh, O'Shea Duke Jackson. African American, Sacramento, California, West Coast stand up. So, me and Tina, this lovely young lady here, we've been having quite the conversations about the Black world uh, over at Casa de Roy, and uh, she's a uh, British Ugandan. And so, obviously, we came across the topic one day of Kevin Samuels, which you guys know Kevin Samuels is very dear to me. I'm the one that discovered Kevin Samuels, and we had a real close relationship and things like that. But uh, we, we seem to have a difference of opinion of Kevin Samuels' impact on black men, but we want to make it here in Africa. And also Andrew Tate, who I have, I don't know him personally at all, but we just want to talk about the, the cultural impacts that Kevin Samuels had, both negatively or positively, on African men and on the continent. We'll let Tina open the argument up today. I don't think Kevin Samuels had any positive impact. <gasps> mm-hmm. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, I think the content that he put out is borderline. It can be damaging. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like it's really important, especially like with black men to, as an older black man, to guide younger black men. And I feel like it it feeds into this sort of nig cell Mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. So like just creating a generation of bitter, angry who blame everything on women Mm -hmm. who tell Mm -hmm. women to humble themselves Mm -hmm. respect themselves men who like to tell women what they can achieve what they can get who they can marry and just i'll I'll stop there for now but yeah (laughs) no no no, no, i don't think there was any positives why but why don't you feel like there is nothing else positive i feel like there's something about Mm -hmm. sitting in your studio apartment Mm -hmm telling single mothers <laughs> that they cannot handle. marry six-figure men <laughs> when you yourself are not a six-figure man. Mm-hmm. There's something very ironic mm-hmm. about that, and I just I just can't get behind it. It's very... But first of all, how do you know he was in a studio apartment? Because we saw it when the screen flipped. Mm-hmm. Could have been <laughs> a very expensive studio apartment. <laughs> do, do, do you not recall? You know, studio apartments in cities like New York cost like a few thousand dollars. But he was in mm-hmm. Atlanta, downtown. In Atlanta, too. So uh, it Atlanta is no it, joke it either. It's expensive. Okay, expensive. fair enough. That's great. But okay. my thing is, and don't get me wrong, even if a man who was making six figures, this type of guy was telling a woman what she could get, it would still rub me the wrong way. But like, it just, it's just, do you guys would remember you the screen flip? I hate to talk ill of the dead and sure. rest in peace. Kevin sure. Samuels, no, he rest genuinely, in peace. honestly. Yeah. Um, but do you guys remember when the screen flip? By mistake. And there was... <laughs> And there but, was <laughs> In other words, trying to say that, that Kevin Samuels had a had a dude in there. Which I have no what? problem with. That I was not him. that was, was somebody not. on a Zoom screen that did that as a troll. There wasn't nobody in there. Really? People used to do that on my on my on my streams. So but go ahead. It's okay. Okay, no, so fair enough. If that was not the case, yeah. I was not there. I don't know. And it's irrelevant. It's just me being petty. But I right. think like yeah, I know there's something about men telling women what they can do that just doesn't sit right with me. It's like, stay out of women's business. Okay. Like, let me talk to my sisters to see if I can get this man. Why are you telling me that? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a great show today, man. <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother, Gaba, go ahead and build it up, brother. I mean, brother, what was your impact, you know, what do you think that the Kevin Samuels impact on, on black men was? I feel like there are a lot of black men out there. Mm-hmm. In both America and across the world. Yes. Who viewed and took in his content and saw the bits of truth in the message that he was trying to put out there. Okay. I feel like there was truth in the messaging, but the delivery was flawed. Okay. 
And the reason why I'm saying the delivery was flawed was mm -hmm. that the truth of how you you should be looking at yourself, your your self image as a man, as a high value male, what you're willing to condone, put up with, accept in terms of how you mold and manifest your relationships with your desired partner, mm -hmm. whether they be of the opposite sex or not, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of what he was talking about was true in that it requires you to look at yourself differently okay. than how a lot of men are programmed to look at themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. particularly considering the fact that we have a whole generation of young men who are raised primarily by women, Yes, right? And they're looking for that male voice that male figure mm -hmm. to give them guidance and suggestion as to how they should act and move. So I can see why his messaging resonated with so many young men. Right, right. But sitting on it from the opposite side to try and put myself in the shoes of the women and men for that matter who find his message objectionable. Okay. I think the primary flaw was that you don't need to break women down in order to be able to big up your brothers. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Left out. Right? And that's how I would perceive mm -hmm. where Kevin Samuel's message was found to be objectionable. Okay. He seemed to relish the opportunity right. to break women down. Give me an example of him breaking women down. Can you can you talk about one a specific point? Um, well, I, I won't, I won't try and play myself and make specific quotes. Yes. Right. But a lot of the conversation that has been called out around why Kevin was looked at as objectionable by women is mm -hmm. that you want a man who's going to do ABC and one, two, three for you, but yet you yourself are not willing to do ABC. One, yes. Two, three, mm -hmm. On the flip side of the equation. Right. right. In a lot of instances, that argument makes sense, right? Mm. Don't ask for somebody who's going to give you the sun, moon, and stars mm. when, you, when you yourself mm -hmm. have a value that equates to a bottom-of-the-barrel bargain deal. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I, I see. <laughs> that's I see, right? Okay. But uh -huh. I, I guess there's no perfect way of being able to articulate it in a way that's not going to offend somebody. Yeah, no, exactly. So... Depending on who you are, depending on what your perspective is, what you want to take out of it, right? You could say that this guy is a genius. You could say that this guy is an oracle, and he's talking that sh that I wish I had somebody to tell me when I was a teenager, yes. when I was a young man in my twenties, getting yes. played and dismayed right. yes. in many relationships. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. You could say that this guy is talking that talk that I wish I heard right. once upon a time in my life, and if I had heard that message. 10, 15, 20 years ago, my life would have turned out differently right? vis-a-vis -vis the relationships that I've been in. right? But again, on the flip side of it, mm -hmm. there's so many ladies who are saying this guy's messaging is toxic. Okay, How are you going to influence a generation of young men to be the kind of men that I would want to be with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If this is your rhetoric. Okay. If this is your messaging. Got it. So, you know. I do agree with Agaba in, in response to the fact that his delivery wasn't the best. It's mm -hmm. like some, I know the message can be great, how you put it across isn't always the best way. The way he would um, try to put some women down, mm -hmm. you know, just to get his point across, mm -hmm. didn't rub me the right way. Mm -hmm. That's just, that, that was my mm -hmm. issue with him anyway. Mm -hmm. That was just it. Him saying, oh, you're fat. You'll never find a man. It's just like, sir, <laughs> come on. Mm -hmm. But that's just it. The power of the message that he was putting out there in terms of how it could help young men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, both young and grown men, for that yeah. matter, mm -hmm. shape their self-image. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. It's impactful. Mm -hmm. Because I come from a generation. I'm, I mean, I'm 43 years old, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be 44 this year. It doesn't look good. Right? And uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Genetics and, you know, eating healthy. Um, I think that I come from a generation where the young men who grew up in the 80s and early 90s mm -hmm. were made to be of a lot tougher material. You have to be a lot thicker skin sure. than a man who's between the age of 18 and say 30 now. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the messaging that he's putting out there is mm -hmm. very relevant and it's an eye opening and an awakening for mm -hmm. so many younger men mm -hmm. who have developed, let's call it feminine traits, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. who have, who've developed a level of softness mm -hmm. and inability to, Mm -hmm. to toughen up and navigate some of the challenges that the world throws at them. Mm -hmm. I think the way that he helps these young men come into their mm -hmm. own as well mm -hmm. can't be discounted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of all of the inflammatory stuff that he says that makes mm -hmm. women feel like they want to mm -hmm. bash him, mm -hmm. 
he is presenting value to mm-hmm. many, many young men out there. Can I ask Agaba a question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just going back to like the first point you made where you said... Um, you want a man who's going to do A, B, C, and one, two, three for you, but yet you yourself are not willing to do A, B, C, one, yes. two, three. Mm-hmm. On the flip side of the equation, right? right? Two arguments to that. If I could do it for myself, why would I need that man? Number one. Number two, mm-hmm. as a woman, right, the way that men have managed to benefit from society through, like, mis- misogyny and the patriarchy and all of that jazz, right, as a woman, one of the cards I do have at my play is hypergamy, which means I don't need to have a million dollars, mm-hmm. right? But I can get the man with a million dollars, and being a woman allows me to climb that ladder in a way that a man doesn't, and it's been happening way before you and me. It's been happening in society for hundreds and hundreds of years, right? Especially in African society, right? Marriage in its essence was about furthering, you know, your, your family's wealth and your assets and all of those things. And women were used to do that. Mm-hmm. So why is it that in, you're saying that men, you said something about uh, men nowadays with their feminine traits. I feel like it's very feminine for men to tell women that they can't go after men with money if they want to, because what was masculine, especially in our society, was to go after men with money to further your family's wealth. Let me let yeah. me get in on this before Please. I won't even be able to talk Please. on the podcast. Coming from me heavy. I'm scared. Okay. Um, I'm about to get all of y'all right now. <laughs> let me let me let one me go one. in order. Okay. So Kevin Samuels had a live stream at one point Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Women had an opportunity to show up and talk to him. If they what? If they choose. Mm-hmm. Nobody asked them to show up. They did it because of what? Their own free will. So what's your disagreement? Um, honestly, I don't have a disagreement. I just came in here because I honestly want some advice from you. It says disagreement day. Oh, I know, but this is my first time catching it on live. Normally I'm asleep. <laughs> What you're basically trying to do is I have a disagreement day and you basically came in and said, damn your topic. I want to ask you what I want to ask you. I would hear Kevin Samuel saying, ma'am, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. But I want to talk about the average at best. She asked the guy, rate me. (laughs) Ma'am, I don't want to tell you. But I'm a single, she says I'm a single mom. Mm -hmm. I make $100,000 a year. Ma'am, I don't want to go there. No, go there. You're average at best. Now, people took that video and went viral with it. How dare he tell women about themselves? But let me talk to you about the song that TLC made. I believe it was in 1998. I don't want no scrubs. Anybody? Uh Mm -hmm. I don't want no dusty ass. We hear women say all the time. Women have no problem anywhere in the black world telling a black man, you ain't the word dusty is a California word. Yeah. It even describes a busted, dusty, broke black man. So black women can tell you all the time, you too short. Oh, you're not charismatic enough. You too nerdy. You're not cool enough. It's, it's okay. It's even okay if black women date young men. Let's, let's look at what's going on right now with Lala Anthony and um, uh, Tandy Newton. And they go get their boy toes. Oh, how Stella got a groove back. Now, look at the passport, bro, guys. You want to go over there to somewhere and date younger women? It's a problem. You're a sex tourist. So there is the, 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 the lane for masculinity and femininity arguments. It's not bilateral. It's unilateral. That's number one. It's unfair. Because we're not the same. Well, so, okay. But, but if we're talking about we equality. Day, so we're not the wait, same. Wait, wait. Let me, let me, let you talk. Let me I'm finish. So, mm-hmm. so, but the, so the thing about what, what Kevin Samuels is, is that number one, and I tell the, the girls here, uh, the women that work here all the time. If you're going to talk to me about what you desire from me, you better be what I'm looking for. And women have a problem with that. Women want what they are not. And what Kevin Samuels did is he held the, 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 the mirror to the face of not only black American women, black women in London and in Africa, wherever they were in the world, to say, if you want to deal with what these high value guys are, they have certain standards for their lives. And you don't meet that standard. So you can take it one or two ways. You can go and fix it if you want this guy, because he ain't coming. And we know that he ain't coming. Look at the single mother rate in black America right now. They talk all this independent stuff. The black community in America is getting worse. It ain't getting better. We were at 72% single mothers. Now we're over 81%. And these cities are dangerous. Who's complaining the most about that? Black women in Detroit. 
That's why you have those guys at the gas station helping these single moms out, protecting them. Because a lot of those ladies, they picked whoever they want to have babies with, and now they're scared because ain't no man there to protect them. That's first and foremost. And women want what they are not, but men cannot want what they are not. And it's, it's, his, it's hypocrisy. You have to be at a certain level to want a high-value man. Now, as far as Kevin being high-value or not, at there are months he's making over $500,000. So can't nobody call Kevin Samuels broke. But the problem is, is that black men have a problem. If black men have a preference for something that's good, even Chris Brown, look at Chris Brown. Black women can tell you all day, I want a white man, I'm done dealing with you, all that stuff. But if you say, if you have money and you say, I don't want dark-skinned black women, it's a problem. It ain't never a problem if they want whatever they want. And that's the issue. Black women want the ability to tell men that you can't ask for nothing. We can ask for everything. So Tina, I want to know, Mm. piggybacking on O'Shea's point, right? Uh -huh. At what point is it appropriate for a guy, for a man, mm -hmm. leave high, low value, whatever, out of it, right? <laughs> At what point is it appropriate for a man to say, this is what I want, this is my standard, I'm not, I'm not, and um, I am not breaking my standard? I think it's a misconception that men don't get what they want. If anything, it's women who typically settle. Do you get yeah. it? Men tend to get what they want. Men don't date potential. <laughs> Women do. Men want this. They want that. And they go for it. True. And again, I don't knock that. Want what you want. But now it's society only feels the need to tell women that what they want is too much. No one sits down and tells these niggas like, nah, you're, she's out of your league. No, they're like, dude, like you're entitled to this. But as a woman, society feels like they have to tell me, oh, you can't get this. You can't do that. But it's like, but I have. But okay. Side point. But the point is like my thing with um, you said the stats about the single parents thing. So I love these conversations where people like bring stats out of nowhere. But statistically, black men are the most present fathers in the states of single parents households. Right. So mm -hmm. to understand stats, you have to understand how they're made. Mm -hmm. So that thing of black women being single parents, it's because, yes, black people in the states have typically had kids out of wedlock mm -hmm. does not mean the fathers are absent. Mm -hmm. So when you read the stats, you assume that the dad is not present. But statistically, white men are not there for their kids in the States. Well, we're talking about apples and oranges. No, no, no. But I, I mean, you, yeah. you said black women have children with men who don't want to look after their kids, right? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I said that women are single mothers, meaning they don't have a husband. That's what I was referring They don't have a husband, yes. Mm -hmm. But there are different types of families, right? So you have the nuclear family where everyone's parent present. I think it's like a lone parent family or something where it's like... <sighs> one parents in the house but they share custody so typically in the states and in the uk fathers are present i feel like that's a misconception and i feel like it's anti-blackness in itself to sit there and yeah i feel like a lot of the time we're doing the white man's work in saying oh black men are not present for their kids black single mothers statistically white women do not have present fathers for their kids so why aren't we telling them to lower their standards and do you see what I mean? And but also, we're not talking about I have white a question. Women. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is you lot's beef with single mothers? I want to know. Because I wish this energy mm -hmm. was reserved for the absentee fathers. Yes. But you never hear those conversations every day. Single mom, single mom. Like, mm. free me. Please. Well, because yeah. single moms, I don't have a particular issue with single moms. No, not you. I mean, like, on in the general. internet in general. Yeah. In general. I mean, like, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just break this down. What are the richest areas of Kampala? Kolola. Yeah. One. Right. Bugalobi. Two. Muyanga. Yeah. Three. Yo -yo. Oh, yeah. Four. Yo -yo. Come on. Mm -hmm. Let's in Chira. There's a Chira County, Bukito's Luboa. Yes? Yeah, Five. Yeah, sure. How many people that are single parents live there in in, in run communities? There? I know some of the most um powerful people in this country that were raised just by their mothers some how many are some in a percentage but it's less than 50 for sure right we don't have stats to but we but, that, but, but but we know mm -hmm. that most people who live where kololo bugalobi where Yo -yo. the 10 richest people in this country are married right <clears throat> the president is married his mps are married mm -hmm. and they don't live by Single parents. But marriage in Kampala is very subjective. Any, so. Let's go to London. What are the most expensive areas in London? Go. We can do this anywhere in the world. It, work, it makes so sense. So you're, you're trying to say that marriage, yes, marriage does like Wherever guarantee Wherever single sense. parents are, mm -hmm. there is crime. I come from that particular neighborhood. Yes. Shout out to Del Paso Heights. 
Where does everybody in Sacramento want to live? Fair what, Oaks. What is Granite Bay? Gunshots. Please add them on the show right what now. Is, Gunshots. <laughs> Criminality. And this is not to say that the women are like that, but the situations. Okay. See, we big up single moms. And this is one of the reasons, the main reasons that Kevin Samuels got a lot of hate from women, and which is which is so funny. Let me say this real quick. One of Kevin Samuels, the biggest fan base Kevin Samuels had was women. Yes. Women loved Kevin Samuels and they hit him at the same time. The reason why is because the truth cannot be denied. If you're if you you lived in America, yeah. the Afri who's the best group in America right now is the immigrants. Africans. But mainly who? West Africans. Mainly who? Nigerians. Nigerians. Mm -hmm. How many of them are single moms in America? Few. There are plenty of successful Nigerians in the States but with in, single mothers. On average, mm -hmm. we're talking about the rule. Not many. Yeah. That's the point. So what Kevin Samuels' message is, is, is doing is it's not against women. It's if you want what you want, that's fine. That don't mean you're gonna get it. And the mm -hmm. point is that women don't, and this is what I believe about black women in general. And I tell the women here that work here, you don't understand what a man wants. Let me just say something real quick, and I'm gonna, because this is a great conversation. I'm gonna just get, get, get to my wine. <laughs> Dating is uh, the only real free market economy I believe that I can I can really honestly say right now. It's free market. That means there's no government intervention. The best person, if I say I want this, just like Apple, they have to be good. If you, because there's competition in the market. Women can. You talk about hard programming already, all, all, like. That's true, but how 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 hard is it for somebody to get a millionaire black man? Do you know who you're competing against? Let me tell you, mm -hmm. you're not competing against just women in Uganda, which there are many. Just a millionaire in this country, you're competing against all kind of African women. You have Rwandese, you have South Sudanese, you have pretty ladies like you, you have everything, right? But then you got white women, you got Asian women, and if you lived in the states, like Brother Agaba, because you know he rich, it's everybody's there. So but you have statistically wealthy black men are married to black women. And who are those Everywhere black women? Globally. It's true. It's true. Everywhere globally in and the States, in the UK, in Africa, wealthy black men are married to black women. It's a misconception. I'm not saying it's not a misconception. When black men get money, they tend to date outside. I feel like that's what's presented to us in the media because, mm -hmm. you know, they have to like oppress us psychologically no, but or whatever they do. you do see it with the footballers. Most oh, no, footballers. Stati no, statistically, no, no, it's they're married to black women. It's just the ones that you see oh, are not. But, but let me again, it's, it's about getting you into a state of mind where you feel like I can't attain mm -hmm. these things because of who I am. But when you look at the figures, mm -hmm. black men are married to black women in any field, rich, poor, Successful, non-successful, statistically, black men are married to black women. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just so let's just this is we can use that argument right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's just leave all the other races out. How many black people is it in the world? Because there's a lot of competition still. We're more than them. Exactly. So I, I might even let's leave okay. everybody else out of the thing. <laughs> this is good. I like this. You trap me. So this the competition is still it's still it's still in Uganda. There's how many millionaires? Maybe if you're lucky, if there's 2,500 on record, there's 50 million people here. There's 300,000 millionaires in Chicago. So. You gonna tell me you gonna have hypergamy in a country with twenty five hundred people? But Ugandans have typically been hypergamous. It doesn't mean millionaire, but it means like you can get a babe that comes from the village, yeah. mm -hmm. and she will meet the man of all men, and suddenly she's not a village babe anymore. Like it's, I it's, feel it's, like it's, it's very possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but what I'm saying is, is that as a woman, you want to get a man that makes a lot of money. You don't even understand what you're dealing with. It's just like coming here as a expat, starting a business, mm -hmm. and you don't understand the economy. Women do not understand what men want. And Kevin Samuels was the mirror to the face. And every I, I can agree. Not everything he did, I agree with. But, you know, he was our brother, my brother. I let him rock, right? So not every everything, but almost 90% I was like, get him, right? Because women don't understand what, a black, what the black man wants and desires. Especially a black man who is successful. Because most of them are not going to tell you. Because they're going to lose their job. You think a brother that went to medical school. And I went to medical school. I graduated from medical school. Brothers are dentists. They're not going to come online and tell you why they're not going to date you because you're going to get fired. But we all know on those trips to Brazil or behind the scenes, hey, you, why you don't date single moms? Why you don't date black women? We, the brother's going to tell you off the record. And what Kevin Samuels did was he exposed the conversation that black men have been having in barbershops all across the black world mm -hmm. every day. You lived in America, you know what I'm talking about, about what was going on in, in black dating. And I'm not saying that they're not women that are not worth marrying, but there are women out there that want something that they're not in a position to get. And they got to do some work. That's all he was saying in so many words. And black women didn't want to, and they don't want to do the work. It's evident. 
That's why marriage rates are down in black America. Let's leave all other groups alone. But the since marriage rates down because black women tend to be more successful than black men everywhere. So then why aren't they? Let's just talk about this. No, I can't be hypergamous if this doesn't have anything. So let me right? say this. Like, so successful as to what? As an education? Because black, black men make more money than black women in America. Because we but do the jobs that actually make money. right? Educational wise, in terms of career wise, because my thing is this, right? You talk about what you're bringing to the table, cool, right? But mm -hmm. as a man, the things that are expected of you, because don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these equality babes. I don't believe in that because I think we're kind of better. But I think like if you're going to bring something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what you're expected to bring is totally different to what I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you get it? So mm -hmm. as a man, I would expect you to bring stability. Right. I would expect you to provide mm -hmm. financially. Me personally, I'd expect you to be like the spiritual leader of my household. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh. because... If you can't intercede Where for you, me, what is he doing? Wait. <laughs> what is he, <laughs> he said enough. At what point... At what Go ahead and build it up, brother. At what point does culture come into play, right? Culture, of course, comes into so, play in the sense that my man has to provide. My man has to care, right? And take care. And then me as a woman, I have to... I don't want to say this word. Yeah, say, it, it, say it. Come on, yeah, say it. Say it. Submit. What? No, you don't submit. want to be submissive? <laughs> right. No, no, no. I, I have no problem with submission. But I think, again, misogyny has taken submission and tainted it, right? And made it seem like slavery. Whereas, like, to me, submission is me being willing to, like, surrender, like, sort of control to you. Compromising. But for me, for me, in order for me to do that, I need to know that you're someone who can be in control. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? So not just marrying some any random guy right like knowing your partner and like um i think my mom said it to me she was like the head and the neck thing right so he's the head draw the neck but the head cannot function without the neck allowing it to move mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's also consulting me and things that i need to be consulted in mm -hmm. and me trusting you where i need to trust you type of thing mm -hmm. and then if it's like that the things that i'm gonna bring as a woman i don't care what anybody says i know that women have this celestial spiritual thing that men don't have and like you know that gut feeling thing yeah. your mm -hmm. intuition i'm gonna tell you like babe that business move i don't know what it is mm -hmm. but yeah. something in my spirit is saying no mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. gonna listen to me and come back and be like you know what you were right. when they talk about pillow talk when they talk all those things like it's not just like on a superficial level but on a true like providing for your family and like all of that level it's like Mm -hmm. You both have roles to play, but the roles are not the same. And I think that's the problem. Kevin Samuel's rhetoric seems to s appears to be about strong masculine men. But as a strong masculine man, hold everything down. You don't require a thing from me, but my but the things that you can't do for yourself, right? Yeah. Which is my female intuition, mm -hmm. right? Which is my ability not just to produce a child, because some women can't do that, but even the way in which a woman will nurture a child is nothing like what a man will do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean yours is invalid, right? right? It mm -hmm. just means it's different. Mm -hmm. So I'm needed. But the funny thing is, I can still do all those things without you. Well, That's what makes me a value. Because no. I can have children, I can run my home, mm -hmm. I can get my finances, I can do every single thing without a man. But you take... Take all the women off the planet now. You guys would just die out. We're not. We're not. We're not saying out. that. Well, go ahead, brother. So that is my innate. I'm, I'm gonna deal with that right there. I'm gonna deal with that right there. Real. Go ahead, brother Baga. I, I, I'm, I'm already. Uh, my my question around the go ahead, difference brother. between mm -hmm. cultures is is very pertinent because everything in the context of Kevin Samuels mm -hmm. and you know Andrew Tate and all these other guys. Mm -hmm. These, we're talking about people in Western cultures, right? Okay. We're talking about people in the U.S. and Europe, for that matter, right? Sure. You cannot conflate the difference between a conversation around how men growing up in single motherhood, uh, statistically dominant single motherhood uh, neighborhoods and areas like in the United States, like O'Shea, where you grew up, for example. Right? Sure. You not you cannot conflate the experience that a young man has had growing up there versus what a young man has growing up here. Oh, oh, that's what I want right? to deal with. That's what I want and to deal with. For that yeah. matter, you can all you can also not mix up the experience that a young woman has versus here, right? Because for example, if you think about a young woman in America, the the big conversation around women feeling like they need to be masculine. They need to play the men's role. They need to to, to, to do everything that a father does. I need to be a single father. I need to be a male father figure. I need to be a provider. I need to be my own rock and all of that stuff, right? Those are things that the typical African doesn't care about. Okay. Let's be real about it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. 
If you're talking about a high value man, a high value African man, you want to talk about hypergamy and you want to talk about a girl coming from the village and being able to, you know, elevate herself from being a, a, a normal village girl to being somebody who has a measure of affluence that she's achieved mm -hmm. through marrying a rich man. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's viable. That's possible because there's a, just an entirely different set of values that come along with achieving your end goal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you think about a person who grows up in a situation where, you know, single parent homes and mm -hmm. the divorce rate mm -hmm. and welfare and all of that stuff that, that, that is suggested in the American context mm -hmm. that systemically keeps women and men apart. OK. Intentionally. Yes. Right. Yes. As opposed to it being here where guys have multiple children with multiple women because they can. So let me ask you a question. They, they, then. Let me just ask you a question. They can because they want to. And I want to get back to your question about what's your beef with single mothers, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it quite simply. I do not have sympathy for a woman who engages in coitus and has a child mm -hmm. from a man who mm -hmm. she knows ain't. Okay. Uh oh, sir, uh -oh, sir, uh -oh. sir, 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 uh -oh. sir, sir, sir. Like you knew he wasn't sh when you laid down with him. I'm can trying I, to tell you. I, you, knew, I, you knew he great, wasn't sh when you let him shoot up the. Can you I knew he wasn't. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We gonna be about the curve. When you, when, when, we when we you were having conversations out. with your girlfriends about Preach. all the fact that he has two other baby mamas, but I'm gonna give oh, him yeah. some pussy okay. anyway. Okay. We go, right? Right? <laughs> like, we gonna you knew he out. wasn't. Don't worry about no, 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 no. Can I? Can I? Can I? This is fire, you? right? Um, yeah. that's bullshit because. <laughs> Because you people do not know a man's ability to turn into a demon yes. the moment he has impregnated you. Yes. And no one can tell me the best actors in the world are men. That is where we're not equal. So you nice. guys take the cake. A man will sell you dreams. You. A man will come into your life. A man will go to your parents. A man will ask for your hand in marriage. A man will do all that shit. Yeah. Right, and you bore his child, and the spirit of Lucifer will enter him. Oh my god! And then he is just something else, right? And I'll say that being, I'm a single mom of two daughters, same dad. Don't play with me. I mean, I learned my lesson in the sense of I had to learn it after, right? Retrospectively, like I couldn't mm -hmm. see it. This was a great man, mm -hmm. and then the moment the kids came along. First one, perfect. Mind you, I was just like, mm, kids, no. He's yeah. like, no, we can do this. Right? Yo, the <laughs> makes you keep the child. And then he turns into, I love my baby. Oh, oh. By the way, I love my, I love my girl. She's my bestie. But I mean, like in that moment, right? I'm like, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah. He's like, no, we can do this, right? Right, right. Takes you on this journey of parenthood. Right. right. And then taps out. But I, Yo, I just... and then you, you're like, what the? And then becomes a demon. Mind you, that particular, I was the first baby mother. I just want to make clear. Okay. But now there is like six. What? <laughs> Listen, and I'm not going to judge two, three, four, five, and six. It's not my place, but side eye a bit. But <laughs> Side eye. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but side eye. But in reality, men and their ability to lie, and also the power dynamic, uh -huh. right? Like men have a certain control in society, whether it's subtle, whether it's quiet, there's a certain control that you have, right? A man leaves his home, home and finds a wife, a man does this. And, and it's like, when he comes to you and he says, I want these things, mm -hmm. and he appears to be that, yeah. then I, am I a f credit check what? that I'm gonna know a demon <laughs> from an Exactly. Like how am I supposed to know So I hate that rhetoric I used to be on Clubhouse Shouting my lungs off Because of this sh For the whole um, Oh why didn't you vet him First of all Vet your father Respectfully <laughs> Don't tell what? me to vet Yes No not you I mean those people on the internet yeah. But I just mean Do you know what I mean There's this whole thing of like Again You you lot are not checking Your inherent bias Towards women okay. And holding them accountable For everything okay. Because why aren't we saying Why do men mm -hmm. Bust a in women yes. and then walk away from their responsibilities. Why is it, oh, I should have known that. Maybe okay, you're just not having the conversation. Let's get back to Jeremy Samuels. Maybe you're just not having the right conversation. But hold on, right let me, let me. No, let me, we're let me. having the right, because me personally, if like, if someone knows me, anyone that knows me, I think you've known me a little bit right now. Yeah. I will ask every question. Yeah. I'm not shy to ask anything. And in dating, I'm the person, first date, we can be chill, we can be, but like, so, that, so what do you want from me? Yeah. That is my question. Let, let's get it back I on the main you topic. I'm prepared to give. <laughs> we won't make it personal, but I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but let me just like, say this. You know what I mean? I, no, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And men can't lie. I'm a, I'm a, like we're going to be this anyway, right? Stop, gonna be like, I'm a anyway. So, you know, I'll I be lying too. So, but I, just, but I wanted <laughs> Thank to bring it. Oh, for sure. I, I get it. Like, I not, no black men out there, we know that 
lie. We know well, that, even right? Black right. men. I'm sorry, white men will say everybody lie, lie. A lot. This okay? is, I mean, oh, they, 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 everybody lies. Thing. Everybody yeah. lie. Men lie. Women lie. Yeah. Mm, so but but, you guys, it's a skill. But, but, but what I want to say is this: it's a skill. I want to, I want to, want to get it back to the let's let's get it back to the main topic because the brother was saying that there is a difference between what, um, the way African Americans or Americans grow up and what brothers go through here. Which is true because they were raised differently Facts. and the systems are differently. But if I go to Acacia Mall today, everybody knows me. And if Kevin Samuels was still living in Acacia Mall, everybody would know him. So then the question is, if it's so different, then why do they know us? I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to tell you. Because despite the differences, African men, Ugandan men, believe that that's why in Nigeria they have the stingy men's association because African men feel that women also are entitled here. Very much so don't, and this is for the men that I talk to don't offer them. Don't not, don't believe they need to offer them anything at all. So what do African men do? They go searching on Google. Give me some typing effects. It's Tati. They do that. <laughs> And they go and look for O'Shea Duke Jackson because I met you at the Chicago airport, right? So I met him we, we, and Tibby going to Chicago on the same flight. So what I'm saying is, although it's different, man, if you're in Uganda and you're a man that is broke, it's the same thing in America. Ain't nobody going to talk to you. That's a fact. It's a fact. And then women here in Uganda, so it's like broke. women feel women are to be given. That's, the, that's more or less here in Africa. That you ought to give me something because you're a man without me doing something. But here's what I found out. I heard a conversation with that one tell you where I was at. It was a group of rich African dudes. And I was hearing what they had to say. I don't even want to repeat it right now. Wanna know why? Because a lot of African dudes that got money, they are gods. They are gods here. They don't have to take no sh you here today and go on no more. I've never been in a in a, in a, in a continent where if you talk back to dudes today, if you really just okay. And in the next 30 minutes, it ain't talk, it ain't like it. In the next 25 minutes, it's somebody else there. That's the power that African men have here when they made it. So you're going to, you know, you, 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 you should be giving, you should be giving. And you don't know, like, you're talking about Uganda. It's an average age of 19, 20. These women here. 35, actually. Is, what is it? 35. 35. Okay. But when you go out there, you know, you see all these young people. Mm, yeah. You, 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 you got a guy here that's doing very well. You want to talk about masculinity you gotta have something to deal with this guy this guy know who he is but typically in uganda the women are doing better than the men statistically we're talking again. about the ones that they want Without i'm not talking them. about i'm not talking about the, the ones hold on a second let me say this yeah, real quick yeah, we're not talking about the ones that you don't want because you don't want the ones you're making more than so f those people you're talking about you're not talking about them you're talking about the ones that you want, and that's back to Kevin Samuels. Black women all day can talk about the ones they don't want, who they're doing better than. What about somebody who you're not doing better than? Somebody like me. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. You come with that, you're gone. The first day. Like, what'd you say? All right, I'm going to call you back. Never call you back. And the guys that are like, anywhere like me, all you need in Uganda is like $5,000 a month or maybe less than that. They're going to be listening to you like that. Like, who do you think you are? And it, that's the problem. A lot of women, in the, a lot of African women are watching these people in America, these Rihanna's, the Birkin bags, and you're not still looking at your own cultural values, like what you need to do to offer value to the man. Now, as a man, we know we can't be broke. We need to be able to lead. We need to be able to build. Mm -hmm. But are these women being taught that? These women are not being influenced. Like we have a video coming out, like why Nigerian men not taking South African women serious. Yeah. And most of these women feel like, well, I look good. I have a nice, you guys call it Nash. Yes. Yeah, so Nash. what do I got to do? Also? But everybody, Uganda, this is Uganda. This is, this is Nash Kingdom. What do you do for this guy besides that? Because there's a lot of ladies that can do that. And that's the problem. Women in the world don't understand what a man, and they don't think that a man deserve anything. So that's the reason why you have what you have. So Tina, so, I want to I wanna ask. You, yeah. you said statistically a lot of women are doing a lot better than men, right? Yeah. So in UG, take, take that for example, right? Because mm -hmm. I see, trust me, I see mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of women moving around Kampala, who are successful in their careers, mm -hmm. very successful, independently, financially stable, mm -hmm. beautiful, appealing, physically, stereotypically, these are not women who would suffer or struggle to get a man. Mm -hmm. But they are chronically single. 
talking mm-hmm. about like it's a it's an epidemic out here in these streets. Okay. But do you know, you know why? I mean? So I want I want to know, and and maybe Juanita, you can you can answer this question for me as well. Yeah, is a woman who is earning more than the man who is either trying to court her, or that could potentially be a good candidate for her to mm-hmm. partner up with, mm-hmm. is a woman who's earning more than her man ever able to really respect and appreciate him to the degree where he feels secure in their relationship me personally no that's why i would not really you know what i i, I was thinking i was like maybe I, she doesn't have to tell him that she makes more than him she can just keep that to herself and compromise so would that then be her minimizing herself would that be her shrinking herself to fit right. into this box because she said selling yeah. preserve selling his less. male yeah his masculine so, ego yeah i would right? never tell my man i make more Never. I think with women, it's different, right? There are some women who are, like, okay earning more, and mm-hmm. they're fine with that. And for those women, like, I salute you, like, mm-hmm. I love it for you. I'm not one of those women. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but those who can do. But I think the thing with men, and not all men, because I know you guys get sensitive about that sh- but mm-hmm. men as, like, a species, right? You tend to go for women that want what you aren't. Right, then they tell you that you must adjust your standards to meet what they are. When in reality, there's sis over here who is comfortable with a guy like you. So why don't you go for her? Why are you going for me who wants this? Right? That's my she, thing. Like, so you need everyone, an example of that. everyone just needs to find their level. Yeah. There is someone for everybody. And we need to stop telling people what they can and can't get. It's actually that simple. If I want this, let me go for it. If he Try. wants that, let him go for it. There are women who will out earn you and be so comfortable. Me personally, yeah, I'm working on myself. I'm not there yet, mm-hmm. but like if if that's what you want and you're comfortable with it, but then also it takes a certain type of man to rest in his masculinity mm-hmm. and not feel like that's being taken away from him when he's being out earned. I remember when I was younger, I watched this show when I was in Uganda, like on holiday on NTV. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget it. It was this older lady, like in her 40s. And she was talking about being with her husband. Mm -hmm. They were happy. Mm -hmm. She gets like this big promotion, starts out earning him considerably, right? Then he just starts beating her, right? And she's wondering what's happening. Then he starts cheating. Then it's like all these crazy things. But she explained it at the end to summarize it in a way of like him sort of searching for that masculinity Mm -hmm. wherever he could. Someone who would who he could feel superior to because he mm-hmm. wasn't feeling like that at home. Mm-hmm. But then there are other men who'll be your biggest cheerleader. He doesn't need all that you want. He's okay with mm-hmm. what he has. Mm-hmm. So I think just everyone find your person. Mm-hmm. Let's stop making like behavior traits gender-based because mm-hmm. that's a lie. Preach. There are very masculine women and very feminine men. It like nothing belongs to anyone. Right. But like if the gender wars, especially as please, we need to stop gender wars. Is, we will only uh, like uh, defeat ourselves honestly. Is your person Honestly. though is your person though validated by establishing the fact that they are able to tick several boxes for you from like a financial capability perspective since you just write you you just openly confessed that you could not respect or appreciate a man oh uh, because I've tried right? and failed okay but <laughs> is 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 your person then qualified by that statistic that he earns more than me where's where's the balance of love Versus the ability to provide financially. It's not in, just in, one statistic. In, in I just think thing. he has to out earn. My boxes are not many. He has to out earn. How many, how many marriages have I provide. seen fall apart? Although the male has every resource that he can mm-hmm. to take care of his wife. Mm-hmm. And she bends over backwards, twists herself into a pretzel to try and figure out how to please the guy. He seems to just not find fulfillment in her or vice versa. Right? Yeah. So I, I, I feel like. We can oversimplify the matter by trying to make it seem like men want that which is more than what they can get, right? Let, let mm-hmm. me let me just. I, I feel I feel like I'm always going to challenge myself. Yeah. Like I'm a man. I'm a hunter, right? Right. I eat what I kill. Yes. Right? Yes. So I need to go out there and that. I need to challenge myself. Yes. I need to push myself beyond my comfort zone. Yes. In order to be able to achieve that thing. Yes. Which not only gives me fulfillment from like a physiological, I my belly is full. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. But also internally, I feel like I've achieved a come goal. On, come on, preach, preach, and preach. And I've, I've, hold on, preach. I've gotten, I've gotten preach. myself preach beyond this. Pass the baton, brother. Right. Pass the baton. Go ahead. You built it up. <laughs> You have built it up. Ahead, you have man. built that up. You see what he just said? Dead. You see what he just said? Mm-hmm. He said, hunter. I'm a hunter. Mm-hmm. My belly is full, but I still want what? More. More. 
we're gonna deal with that because I'm gonna teach you one of the day. What's your problem? You see, wow. you see, you see, you see, based on that alone, this is the problem that women can do. See, in the private sector, they can go out there and hunt. They can compete. That's why they can say that we are doing better than y'all educationally. But when it comes to hunting for a man that you can actually compete for, uh-oh, no, I'm not competing for these. Now we got a problem now. Now we don't have that same energy. How can I compete when I'm the prize? So you can believe whatever, you can believe whatever, I'm not dealing with that. You can believe whatever that you feel you are. You can be the rainbow, you can be Skittles, you can be Snickers, you can be f***ing Barney Rubble. But you have to be able to prove what you're talking about in life. Let me build it up, brother. You, 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 you gave me the baton, let me keep it. Let me say something. You can feel however the f*** you want to feel about yourself. I have no problem with that. Right. But you better be able to deliver what you feel that you are. And once you cannot deliver what you feel you are, then you are a liar. Yeah. And Kevin Samuels is here to put the mirror to your face. And like me, every time I come in the I'm dealing with the black world every day. I'm dealing with you Negroes every time I come here. I hold the mirror to y'all face all over the black world. That's the only reason why I'm right here for money. I'm here to put the mirror to faces every day. That's the only reason why I'm here. And secondarily, if we having the conversation, I saw what Vogue did with uh, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna. Put the picture up there so they can see. This is what <laughs> we're gonna deal with that. Yeah. Here she is leading this man who's looking like because a little girl. She's a f- billionaire. So so so, I'm so, sorry. so so okay, what? she's a billionaire. But we're gonna deal with the real issue is she could not get what she was. Sorry, she did, and she, she, she left did it behind. Not. Yes, she, she did not. She did. She had the Saudi billionaire, and she and, walked away. Oh, walked because, away? Because we can say that all day. But she ended up with, with another billionaire that would deal with her because it was already taken. That's the whole point. And so when women are talking about these conversations, you cannot get what you're talking about. Because I can feel any kind of way. I can feel like I can be in a dunk contest. I'm 41 years old. I can't touch this goddamn thing no more. That don't mean I'm going to win. And women feel whatever they want to feel about how you feel. But you can't prove how you feel. And we know you can't prove how you feel because that's why you get them same ladies on Tinder. I want you messaging me if all you're trying to do is pound me. I'm a queen. Well, then, <laughs> why are you on Tinder? Because sometimes queens want to be on Tinder. Because you're not a queen if like you if think you're a you king, are. Why are you on Tinder? Because if I, because I don't have to be on Tinder. But, but I had a profile, but I'm just saying, is it, is I don't need to. Up? If you're on Tinder, you're not looking <laughs> for it. I think you made a profile of me and pretended to be me. Uh, but what I'm saying is this, before we, we're going to end it up, I'm saying, you cannot prove what you're talking about. That's the problem with women. So you can feel however you want to feel, feel you king of Uganda or king of Nigeria, but you ain't, you, you ain't going to be a goddamn thing. And people talk about you. When you go out there and say stupid things like that, everybody know you crazy. Everybody know you ain't, got, you ain't making no sense. Everybody knows that. We just won't tell you in front of your face. When you see somebody, some woman who's delusional talking about, I, I know what I can get. I know. We wait till you f***ing leave. And it's not even us talking about you. It's other women talking about you. He ain't lying. To be real, uh, look at Lizzo and Mike Wright. Is Mike Wright. Exactly! Who the f*** <laughs> is Mike Wright? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Tindy Newton, whoever else. He's her boyfriend, right? And you don't even know who he is because he's a non-factor. No, that so doesn't mean... Wh- what it says is you could not get who you are. It ain't nobody's fault is that. But as a man, Brother Gaba, if you come and tell me, bro, I don't have this as a man, I'm going to say, hey, man, you're 47 years old. Why the f*** you didn't get it? Right. But, but, but that's how men think. Women want to be able to think like men and not be able to produce the but, results right. at but, the same accountability. But st- you, you love stats, right? So statistically, I can black women bit. can get what they want because they're married to black men globally. Some of them can get what they want. Right? True. And just because, again, that's why we said that thing of like sometimes for a woman, one of the, her, her, what's, what's that thing? Deal breakers, yeah. right? Is that he can't out earn me. For other women, it's not. I'm not being funny. If I had $1.4 billion, right? Because it's not about the actual figure. It's right. about can we lead the same lifestyle, right? So ASAP and Rihanna can lead the same lifestyle. Yeah. He can still do the same things. Would him be in a- No, it doesn't make him a you It does. Whenever I have to lead you're you. You're seeing him as a and again, when we get back to the Kevin Samuels thing, right? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. ASAP Rocky. In, the reason you're seeing it as a to 2023, what Stedman Graham was. Who's that? Oprah Winfrey. You young, you I don't was know. Literally we born know Stedman Graham. I don't yeah. know who that is. ASAP Rocky is the millennial. And version that's what a lot of professional Stedman. black women want to move the goalposts when they're no. young and can't get nobody yeah. and they get it's older. Like, they want a beta male that look good. It's not about, but listen. Oh, f- 
off because first of all, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. First of all, for She's centuries, cursing. oh, they're gonna, they're gonna blur it out. We can blur it out. Okay. Oh, okay. For Curse centuries, right? Men have been dating, and we're not allowed to say a thing, right? Old men, babies, da- yes, young women, children, or Kelly and right? Dio. Okay, no, 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 not not that type of babies, but I mean, really young, fresh out of college, all young right, women, all right? All right. All right. Everywhere globally, and we're not allowed to say anything. But the moment a woman wants to go lower, it's, it's a problem. It's not a problem. It's just you lying. What's it a problem for? You, I don't I care who you. It don't, it don't matter to me. But don't sit here and talk about how powerful you are, and you with this dude that can't read and write. And you making five hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, maybe and he can't he's read just and write. really good in no, bed. It exactly. depends on what your because priorities are. Because you couldn't are. get nobody who could read and write. No, so now you're dealing no, 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 no. with Pookie if, and Ray Ray in the bed, clapping them if, cheeks up. No. That's what's going on there, oh, and everybody know it. <laughs> Listen, that's if, why y'all going to Ghana right no. now. You know, <laughs> Omo Wale and o, Olu and Nigeria. First of all, and they big buff dudes with long. We don't. We know what y'all doing out there. In a year all, return, y'all returning to something all, else. But we leave know what it is. Our beautiful dark skinned Ghanaian men alone, please. Uh-huh. And then they're once y'all this, get through okay. getting pounded, they're y'all will beat this. them and talk about how they ain't broke. You ain't got nothing going on. You ain't why you didn't go put the garbage yeah. out. All the. I just think you see we're talking about Kevin Samuels to tie it back into the subject. The mm-hmm, reason mm-hmm, I think men like him are dangerous is because it breeds this this generation of men who feel entitled, who feel like everything that is wrong with their lives is due to black women not wanting them. When in reality, mm-hmm. you guys have done everything off of the back of black women. I would like for black women to not be a talking point for black men. That's just what I would love. If Kevin Samuels was sitting there educating young black fatherless men, I have no business. But why am I in it? Mm-hmm. Literally, just why am because I in it? Because you have the problem just no, like us? because I'm not half the problem because I breed life, right? We protect you. So the men are all the problem. We birth right? you, we birth you, we protect you. That don't mean nothing. We cuddle you. What do you mean it means nothing? We, Can you give that? That means everything. If, you, if we are half the problem... You have the problem You're not too. half the problem. And it's not a black men thing. It is a men globally thing oh, are the man, problem man. 100%. Yeah, so would Period. Okay, maybe 1% for the pick me up bitch. Oh, God. But oh, wow. As for the rest, <laughs> no, because it's a, it's a small percentage. Not all, but the, there are women that are committed to defending stupid men. And they exist. Yeah. But you just, know, uh, okay, come on. There are a higher percentage than just 1% of those pick me up. Let's be right? nice. Just one I want to pick me. You want to pick me, and yes. men love. I'm gonna put your ass out. Isn't, isn't, isn't a woman? Isn't a they pick, pick isn't I'm a going pick to me put woman, you out. AKA submissive woman. No, submission no. is not pick me. You're gonna submission submit. Submission is right. I'm submitting, right? But this is still my home. This is still my ship. Yes. If I see you're gonna sink it, and I'm gonna pick me, mm. it's okay, babe. Yeah. Like, they what you want? But babe. because this is my home and my family, it's like I see what you're saying and I respect your point of view. But what if we tried it this way? Yeah. What do you think about like this? No, 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 no. I like, I like that. I like that. I'm gonna tell you something. You that's that's it. great. Let me say something. One, one thing that you said, and I definitely agree with. Women see things in a way. That men don't. And I'm going to give a shout out mm. to the ladies on our staff. Jonita, yes. who was my general manager for many years, and Rachel. We wouldn't have what we have today if it wasn't for them. They saw the business differently than I did. And I'm thankful for them. So it is the black man's job to do something for his women. I, you know, And you know me personally. That's how I feel. I know that. Right. <laughs> that's why I'm confused. <laughs> no, but, 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 but I'm going to hold the mirror to y'all's faces. But at a certain point, this, co- ahead, this whole conversation up, just feels like people shouting at each other for the benefit of hearing their own voices. Okay. Right? No, we're building it up, brother. <laughs> because it's, a podcast. it's like it's like black women are always going to find an exception. Yes. Oh, you're not going to do you. this on the back of black women. We're not going to do this that on the back of black women. On, build it and up. then in the same breath, you go out there and start defending black men when they're vilified and maligned by those mm. who are not yourselves. Mm. Do you claim exclusivity and exclusive right to be the only group of people in the world that can malign and vilify black men because Uh it seems like Mm -hmm. when black men are being vilified by non-black women you want to raise a fist it's the same reason i can say you're you're mine i'm gonna ride for you it's the same reason i can say as soon as as the opportunity presents itself for black women to align in formation and vilify a black man it's like the script was written Mm-hmm. And let's read it fluently because we already know what we're gonna hear. Yeah, it's nothing I, new. Again, I think Pony. everything is balanced. So me personally, I'm not a part of the I hate black men train. Right, I'm a part of the men are f-ed up train. It, 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 it's not exclusive to race. Like men in general, as you really people, do love black men. Though. I'm gonna say that no, she, no, really I do. Do. she really do. She really do. She really do. And like sometimes they call me a pick me, but it's not about being a pick me. But it's about like 
logic, right? And it's the re- there's a reason why you can say the N word mm-hmm. and some random white man can't right. yeah. you get it so i i can speak because these are my people these are our problems but some random white woman who's been messing with a black man for two months can't just do you yeah. know what i mean it's not her place whatsoever to say that but then i also don't support that thing where we like shit on oh no you guys are gonna use this and they're gonna say i'm a pick me no, say no it's so fine. wait this thing where we like on black men right yes. and i think it's similar to what kevin samuels was doing in that he would on black women and race baiting and gender wars have just become a thing that content creators do for engagement Mm -hmm. when most of the time they don't even believe in that they genuinely don't believe in the points that they're saying but they know that if i aggravate yeah it's the same way white media does with black people they know that if they aggravate black consumers Mm -hmm. it equals engagement right Mm -hmm. so we Mm -hmm. do it to ourselves Mm -hmm. so yeah just yeah but yeah all these points have been amazing this has been um hold on we're coming back for part two maintain (laughs) <laughs> I'm mad at you, bro. You were supposed to be here today. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to the camera. Yes. <laughs> Maintain. Where was you at, bro? But I'm let's mad, wrap I'm this mad. up. Guys, we'll thank you, you so much. Tell the people they can find you, this by the, the way. You can follow me at Master Gabs, M A S T E R G A B S, on Instagram, Twitter. Holler at me, man. Follow me. I'm trying to get my followers up. I'm stuck at like 1,200 right now. Okay. So. A baller. No flex. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, you can find me on Tina Gram, T E E N A H Gram. And Tina tweets, T E E N A H tweets. Okay. Yeah. Man, this is a f- fire. Pop. I'm drunk. Um, no, his not. Shout out to I want to give a special shout out to so the, the brothers and sisters out here. Brother Agab, I met him on the way to uh, to meet. Shout out to Rachel. Shout in the out back. to Rachel. That's my manager, right? Joan, 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 Joan. About to, Joan was the manager before, but yeah. Joan, Joan is busy. T- she she revived King Ganda. So shout out to Joan. But I met Brother Agab on the way to Chigali, um, and that's how we we linked up. And I met Tina through Sister Sue Cholo. And I'm just so uh, grateful. Yeah, shout out Casa de Roy, guys. Yeah. Please go there. I'm I'm so grateful that the diaspora wants to even come and engage with us and give us a fire show because we cannot do it without people like them. And um, I'm just I'm just so glad. This is fun. I am about to be lit up. And thank you for supporting us. Thank you for the diaspora and the Ugandan community supporting us. We about to take the number one uh, podcast in the country. So I'm just and I'm petty too. So check my WhatsApp statuses. Right. I'm talking a lot of. He, and I just uh, that's what I do in real I'm really like this in real life like I'm not just a YouTube person this is just me yeah. I'm full of so um thank you so much thank you for the brothers for giving us a great show today um and, and rest in peace Kevin Samuels I wanted to say this about him yeah. what I knew about him as a brother um you know I, I was able to, to uh his, his mom read me uh, wrote us a, a, a handwritten note to my mother when he passed um Kevin Samuels was a brother that really was holding black men to feet to the fire. We don't look at that content. I know when I met him. And Kevin Samuels wanted black men to be somebody. And we have the Pan-African dating show, which is how I met her, because of Kevin Samuels. I wasn't him I do no dating show. But Kevin Samuels was was, was, was trying to build a, a, a good community for stuff like that, for blacks that in the world could come, come together and meet. So we have that because of him. Yeah. So I just want to give the brother context. He wanted black men to take care of black women and men to be better, women to be better. And that's why he has so much of an impact. You know what I mean? Some people don't like it, but the brothers is misunderstood by some people. But he wanted you to be able to, to be a man. And, um, and shout out to the brother. He wasn't perfect. Nobody was perfect. But I love the brother. I love what he did for the community. I love what he did to bring us together. And people got married because of Kevin Samuels. Like, literally. Yeah. People got married. I used to be on the phone with Kevin Samuels. He'd be like, O'Shea, move to Atlanta, man. People know you. And this one time was an officer. And uh, he's like, Kevin, man. I was gonna leave my my fiance, but she listened to you, and now I'm she's a better wife. He's like, uh, he's like, man, I'm on the phone with O'Shea. He's like, what's good, everybody? It's your boy O'Shea. So I just want to just you know thank him for what he did for me is in, in in his business and what Kevin Samuels indirectly did for Africa because we wouldn't have what we have right now. In the last part, if it wasn't for him, and we wouldn't be on this podcast right now because if it wasn't for Pat and Dating Show, I wouldn't have came back here. Hey. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Thank you for your heartfelt speech. <laughs> speech! <laughs> it was a deep one. Real but one. thank you so much, guys. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe to Kengana. And let us know what you think in the comment section. Follow us on all our social media pages at Kengana Nation. And speaking of marriage, if you want to get married, head over to the Pan African Dating Show. Subscribe and get yourself a wife, an African wife at that. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>